Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're here to talk about Dyson spheres, which are huge structures, like the one you see behind me. I should say huge hypothetical structures uh, built around stars. So the idea for them came from science fiction, from a 1939 novel called Star Maker by Olaf Stapledon. And that book inspired a physicist, Freeman Dyson, who in 1960, published a science paper showing that it might be possible to find a Dyson sphere out in space built around a distant star for the purpose of harvesting that star's energy. And you know who would do such a thing? Only an advanced alien civilization could do it. And I'm so excited to be here today with Professor Colin McInnes, who is in the Systems, Power, and Energy Group at the James Watt School of Engineering at the University of Glasgow. Colin, welcome. Thank you, Deborah. It's, it's so good to have you here. And you've just released a new paper related to uh, whether Dyson spheres can really exist and we're going to get into that. But first, tell us more about Dyson spheres themselves. Like, what are they? And why do people often use the word mega structure to describe them? Okay. Well, as you said, um, Freeman Dyson in 1960s uh, kind of popularized the, the idea of the, the Dyson sphere. And I think that the question which, which Dyson was asking himself is, for, as a civilization expands, it uses more energy. Uh, and what, what's the end point of, of, of that process? And so Dyson imagined that a civilization is using more and more energy. And eventually it may build a structure which encompasses the whole of the parent star. So all of the energy from the star is being used. So by analogy, uh, on Earth, we use a little slice of energy from the sun. So the the sunlight which is intercepted by the earth that's used for the, the biosphere agriculture it's used to generate electrical power using solar panels but we're still using a tiny tiny fraction of the energy um, which the sun radiates and so dyson's idea is that if civilizations uh, expand they need more energy and maybe just maybe you can imagine a, a civilization which uh, encompasses the entire star and uses all of the energy uh, much more efficiently uh, than um, you know, almost all of that energy be, being radiated away into into dark space. The idea wow. of the do we do we know? I mean, do we have a, an idea of how much energy we could get from a Dyson sphere in contrast to what Earth uses now? Well, if, if we were to enclose the entire sun in, in, a, in a shell and we were then to, to capture and use all of that energy, we're essentially using the entire you know, power out from the sun, which is a, a kind of astronomically large number uh, compared to the uh, power which we currently use uh, use on Earth. And in fact, there, there, there's ideas of, of, of measuring uh, civilizations on a scale of the, the fraction of the energy of the parent star which they use. So, you know, a, a, a civilization using a, a Dyson sphere, that would really just kind of max out that scale. That would be using you know, all of the energy from their from their parent star. And so uh, this is such a beautiful illustration. So that's a star inside this, this big hypothetical structure, a star, an actual star like our sun. And there was a controversy in science about these hypothetical Dyson spheres. So was it a study that showed that they couldn't exist, that they'd be unstable? And, and why did they think they would be unstable? Okay, yeah, I guess there's two questions. There's first is, what would a Dyson sphere look like? So you could imagine the Dyson sphere as, as a thin shell, almost like a kind of, kind of balloon, if you like, kind of uh, encompassing the, the parent star. So it was a kind of solid, a single solid object, you know, huge, you know, this absolutely enormous mega structure, but, uh, but extremely thin. Um, one of the issues there is that the, the shell is being pulled in 
with the gravity of the parent star. And it turns out uh, for that to work, it would have to be incredibly strong material. And in fact, the shell itself, because it'd be so thin and so big, would be susceptible to, to, to buckling. So you can imagine it would kind of fail due to buckling. So one idea, and I think Dyson kind of picked up on this as well, is that you, you can imagine a, a, a solid, very thin shell. But maybe more realistically, you might have a swarm of independently flying energy collectors. But that swarm of collectors, there's so many of them, and it becomes so dense that essentially you've got this sphere uh, around the star. And again, you're using essentially all of the energy coming from the star. But if we take the idea of the, this, of the solid shell, um, if we imagine a picture, we've got the parent star, and we have this uh, solid shell, kind of eggshell, balloon, whatever it's encompassing the parent star if you look at the mathematics of that if you imagine the shell imagine you imagine you divide it up into a very large number of small pieces and you then calculate the gravitational attraction between each piece and the central star and then you, you add those, add those all up now it turns out that the net effect is zero the, the 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 gravitational pull in different directions all cancels out perfectly this is something called newton's shell theorem and Newton's shell theorem says that if you have a mass inside a solid shell, that there is no net gravitational attraction. Now, there's a gravitational attraction between each little bit, each little slice, but when you add them all up, uh, it sums up to zero. So the implication of that is if you have a Dyson sphere or shell surrounding the parent star, it's just going to sit there. So there's going to be no overall net gravitational attraction. So if you give the shell a tiny little kick, it's going to drift and there's nothing to stop it drifting it will just drift until it collides with the parent star so that that's the the kind of instability uh if you like of the uh, the solid uh solid dyson sphere or dyson shell okay but your team uh has just found and published a new study and and what was it that you found yeah, well, we want to, the, what would happen if you put a Dyson sphere into a binary star system? And it, it's a kind of fun problem. Um, so for the this single star, and then you've got this thin shell surrounding it, and it's a due to Newton's shell theorem uh, that the Dyson sphere would be unstable. But if you imagine a, a binary star system like you have in animation there, and uh, you've got a very large star and a much smaller star, and we put the Dyson sphere or the shell and we surround the smaller star, it turns out it can, in principle, be stable. Um, and there's a little slice of the, the parameter space of the problem where this uh, stability uh, occurs. Essentially, the, you'd have one star which would be about maybe eight times heavier than the other star, and you then get the Dyson sphere of shell around the smaller star, and in that case, um, it would be it would be stable. If there was two kind of equal mass stars, it doesn't work. It's still unstable. You have to have one really big star and one smaller star. And in that case, if you you go through the mathematics and you can demonstrate that in fact the the Dyson sphere of shell, uh, which is going to encompass uh, the the smaller star, um, would be stable. So quite different from the the single star case. Okay, now wait, let me make sure I'm understanding this. So you have the two stars and you've got one more massive star and one less massive star. Yep. And you have to build the Dyson sphere around the less massive star? That, that's right, yeah, just like the illustration there. So the two stars are in orbit around each other, in orbit around mm -hmm. their common center of mass. And you would then mm -hmm. have the, uh, the Dyson sphere, the shell, which would be around the smaller the stars, and that's then orbiting with it. So the, the, the shell around the small star is orbiting, just like you see there in the animation uh, in this binary star system. Wow, things just get more and more complicated, don't they? Because then you've got the issue of, you know, can a civilization exist around this planet in this double star system that has this Dyson sphere attached to it as well. So, or maybe they would just, well, no, I'm not going to extrapolate in my mind on this. <laughs> Never mind. We don't have enough time to go there. So, uh, th that is so interesting. So, you found that it is possible, and that's the paper that you just published. Yeah, it, it's, it's just about possible under very specific conditions. And also, again, this is referring to the, the kind of rigid shell 
rather than a swarm of independent collectors. But it's, it's a kind of fun problem, uh, and it, it does make the point that, you know, in principle, uh, at least, in a particular type of binary star system, that you could have a, a stable, a passively stable uh, Dyson sphere. And I asked you earlier about uh, this idea. So you're talking about a single a shell, a shell around a star in contrast to a group of satellites. Let's go yep. to the next slide, Jeremiah. And so, because there is this idea uh, of building Dyson spheres starting with uh, individual satellites and would the individual satellites be gravitationally stable? Would they remain stable? The, um, as Dyson spheres? Well, if 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 you yeah, but if you have an individual satellite in orbit around the the, the parent star, then yeah, I mean that's just a you've got a circular orbit, just like the planets, and that is in, in general is, is stable. If you have a, a large number of independent um, kind of satellites, it, it, as long as there's not much of a kind of gravitational uh, interaction between them and you can consider them each independently orbiting the parent star, then yeah, you, you can imagine a, a kind of swarm of collectors uh, orbiting the, uh, you know, orbiting the, the yeah, just like, like your, your illustration there. So the more and more collectors you add, the more, the bigger the fraction of the energy from the parent star, which you're, which you're capturing. Okay, so, I mean, it, it, it sounds feasible, but let me ask you this, how much stuff, how much material would it take to build, you know, whether it's a shell, uh, like you were talking about earlier, or a collection of satellites, as we see here, how much stuff would it take to build all of that? I mean, is there enough stuff, for example, in our solar system to build a shell? Because this is this has got to be extending out, what, beyond the orbit of Mercury, beyond the orbit of Earth? Like, how far out are these Dyson spheres extending? Yeah, yeah, as you say, I mean, they, these are really, you know, mega structures. This is sort of engineering right. on a, a truly astronomical scale uh, and would require you know, colossal um, uh, quantities of material. So, yeah, I mean, to, big, uh, to build a, you know, a kind of big Dyson sphere shell, you know, around the sun, maybe a kind of meter thick. I mean, it's just not enough stuff in the solar system to do that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can imagine uh, this kind of swarm, maybe, you know, very thin, you know, very thin solar, very thin collectors for collecting energy. And you can imagine, uh, you know, a, a swarm of large numbers of these devices, but to build a, a single kind of a rigid Dyson sphere, kind of meter thick, so it's just, there's just not enough stuff about to, in the solar system uh, to, to, to do so. And so uh, do you personally think that there are Dyson spheres? I mean, we don't even know if there's an advanced alien civilization out there, but you know, I think that the general assumption is that there may be. Mm -hmm. And if there is, do you think there might be Dyson spheres out there in space? And, and if there we, are, could, could we find one? Yeah, I mean, I think what's kind of interesting thought experiment is to, to put yourself in the position of uh, some other kind of civilization. And you, you, you're an engineer in, in that other civilization. What kind of structures could you build? Within the kind of you know the, the kind of standard laws of physics, so we can, we can imagine a, actually a, a range of you know very large structures which could be built for energy collection, for controlling planetary climates, a whole range of possibilities, including the Dyson spheres them, themselves. And and if we do so, we could then maybe think. Okay, so if we imagine these different types of structures being built in orbit around other stars, what would they look like? we were to observe them from through a telescope. So for example, if you have um, you know, a swarm of energy collectors around the star, then the energy collectors, they're going to uh, absorb energy, but they're then going to radiate waste heat. And so if you're to look at the spectrum of a star and you see um, a, a big excess in the infrared, in the, kind of, the kind of waste heat end, if you like, then maybe, that just maybe, that could be the indication that there are kind of large structures uh, around the parent star. Or if you look at transit light curves, so if you look at the the, um, the brightness of the star and you see little dips, and maybe these dips are due to structures in orbits uh, around the star. This is really, it's really difficult to kind of untangle because there's a whole range of other explanations. If you have uh, dust clouds, then dust clouds will radiate heat, waste heat as well. 
that will give you a strong uh, component of the infrared spectrum. But again, it's, it's an interesting thought experiment just to put, your, put yourself in a position of, uh, of an engineer uh, in uh, another civilization thinking, okay, what, what could we build? What could other civilizations build? And what would they look like viewed from Earth? And that would be a so-called techno signature. So we've got a techno -sig technological signature of uh, intelligent civilizations uh, elsewhere. And again, you know, it's a really fun thought experiment. Um, but if you can work out what those techno signatures look like, then it gives you markers. So if you're then and looking through uh, databases of spent light curves from stars, and maybe you can filter them by using these techno signatures, and maybe pick out some interesting objects for for further uh, further um, observation and investigation. But again, it's a tricky one because um, what could be a techno signature also could just be a completely natural phenomena of dust clouds, um, you know, planets uh, orbiting in front of the parent star, a whole range of kind of explanations. But again, it's a fun thought experiment just to see where it could take us. It is. And I'll tell you what, Colin, if I were an alien civilization and I were going to come to Earth and abduct somebody, you would be number one on my list of people. <laughs> <who are> <laughs> So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get out of here. But that was so interesting. Thank you so much. Well, thanks thanks so much, Deborah, for the invitation. It's been a pleasure to to join you. Thank you. Okay, that was cool, wasn't it? Um, we are Earth Sky, and we're here live every weekday at the same time. So please join us tomorrow when I'll be showing you one of the easiest and most fascinating of all constellations, a summertime favorite for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, Scorpius the Scorpion. I hope you'll join me then. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.